GG Leap, I just said the name. It's something that uh, has been a code name behind the scenes for us um, since December of 2014. In January, we brought on 13 centers that have funded this project underground from January through June. And then in July, eBash graciously agreed to throw ourselves into the frying pan and start testing out the software. So GG Leap is the name of our standalone software that you can use to run your land centers. And we officially are launching it today. We The website is up. Uh, it's www.ggleap.com. Uh, it's a cool little name, and the intention is obviously to be the fact that GG Circuit recognizes what we needed to do for the management software, for land centers, for gaming centers, and we want to jump ahead of everything else that's out there. Everything that you're going to look at that's on the market today was built or designed in a programming language at least 15 years ago. What we did is that we went back completely to the ground. It has nothing to do with any other software we've ever used. There's nothing out there that we wanted to use or that we cared about using from anything that we've even built. And here's why it's so crazy cool. There's no server in your building. You know, there's, this goes back to why I think running a land center is super important to have business people running a land center. You're not going to run a server in your store. You're not going to have to set up a database. You're not going to have to figure out how to configure executable files and things. You're not going to have to figure out how to work on registry files. You're not going to have to figure out all the things that we've sat and tried to figure out for years. I want people to be able to open a land center and to install this stuff and do it in a day. You know, like that should be that easy. It should be that easy that a person with common computer skills that have that knows how to run a business that enjoys gaming or knows what gaming does but doesn't understand everything under the hood they should be able to open this up case in point we took this to Gen Con at the beginning of August and we ran this on a nearly 300 station network with almost 10,000 people coming in in 4 days and we set it all up and ran it live you know my guys almost killed me because it was like a super stressful situation to get it done and to get it out in that time. There were hiccups and there were problems. We've gone through that for everybody else. We've gone through a lot of those hiccups and problems to make sure that we're really putting the product through its paces and getting it ready. So all of this runs online. So there, it runs on Amazon's web servers, and there's a couple reasons why we do that. Um, Number one, the biggest thing that we've always wanted in the past is we've wanted to interact with our customers live from day one. You know, there's it, it's not possible to do that in an environment where you're placing physical equipment at these centers. Some of them are smart enough and some of them are adept enough technically to make it all work behind the scenes. But I can tell you, if that system wasn't built to deliver your content on the web, then it's not going to ever work the right way that you wish it would work, especially in mobile apps, especially with mobile views on tablet views, especially with touch screens, all of those things. So our system is completely web-based for the server. It's completely web-based for administrative functions. That is so freaking cool. You know, I don't... It blows my mind that with our phones and our tablets, we can walk through Gen Con with 300 stations around us and help customers at their station with our wireless tablet or with our cell phones, add more time to their account, sell them more products and ring it up right there. We could just, there's so much you can do with your, your phone that you're used to running up to the admin station, wherever that software is installed on some computer in your store. Screw that, man. Like log in from home and see what everything's doing. Don't install anything. Borrow your girlfriend's phone and log into the website and see what everything's doing. You don't have to have anything installed for the administrative functions. Uh, the other big thing for us was this is huge for eBash. You want to know why people haven't gotten big. You want to know why this industry hasn't consolidated because it's there's not support for multiple locations. Being the fact that you've got to install this software on a server in this location, my two eBay stores right now used to have two separate systems running at each store. A guy, the stores are an hour apart. If a guy left one store and went to the other store, he has a different account with a different amount of, of money on that account and a different amount of credit. He has a, maybe a different username because he didn't get there fast enough to, re, to get the username reserved for himself. Our system, since it's all online, supports multiple locations for license sharing, 
which is huge, for um, remote administration, which is huge, for things like logging in and being able to take a phone call and service the customer from another store. Our phone systems are connected. If you dial a, one of our stores, the person that answers your phone call may be at eBash Terre Haute or eBash Indianapolis. We can book a birthday party. We could sell you time on your account. We can check how much time you have. Your, we can do all those things. You know, I could put one of these phones at my house and do tech support from home now because I can pull up our web admin for GG Leap at home and do whatever I wanted from home. So that web-based system is revolutionary and nobody else is doing it. And in, I don't think there's anywhere in the world you're going to find a better technical team than we have in this industry that can write this code. Chris, McGee, Andy, you know, Ross, those guys that are working over there, Colin, those guys build industry leading software for other industries and on top of that they've all been in owned and worked in a land center in the past so they're building applications for companies um, for the the government in Ireland where they're at you know they're they're building applications for big fortune 500 companies and things you know we have a team that is heads and tails above anybody else out there technically i would i would doubt that there's anybody and i'm saying this because it's battle scarred expert from my standpoint and my team of running a land center. We've been through the ups and downs. We've been through the goods and the bads. We've seen the heyday. We've been out there and we, you know, I've worked with MLG. I've worked with World Series of Video Games. Um, we've traveled with all these different companies like World Cyber Games. You know, we've been there. We've done it. We know this industry. We know how to make this thing work. And then we bring in Mark, who for years has had great contacts and knows the inside of the industry with game publishers, developers, and manufacturers. So the three-headed monster of our team that's putting this together, is it, it, it's unstoppable. There's no way that anybody else is going to be able to compete with us on any level. And we'll start talking about some of the features and prices here in a little bit. But one other thing that I wanted to touch on while we're on the web-based system is this is huge, is that license management and license pools – can be shared not only between ownership groups that have multiple stores, but also for all of us together. And the reason why that is huge, the reason why this is humongous, is that in the past, iGames used to get us copies of games um, for showcases and premieres. And you guys that have been around a while remember this. This were the good old days is that through the mail, you get your disc copies and your license keys for Steam or whatever. You would own, you know, eight or 16 copies of the game for your center. Now, the problem with that was whether your center had 10 PCs, 50 PCs, or 100, you could only get eight or 16 copies because they tried to spread them around to everybody. What our system will do is allow a publisher to give us licenses to support GG Leap centers and, and all they can be all over the world, and all of them will benefit from a shared license pool across all those platforms. So... You know, if Mark Carter down at Guff has one of his guys in one of his seven centers that launch a game, it can pull a license pool out of a publisher supplied license for him and his player to launch in Australia. And then as soon as he's done with it, we could pull that out and we could launch it somewhere else. Now, some of the systems are going to be regional based and we'll have all that divided out by system group. So in other words, a, a key that's launched in Australia, if it's launched again in another country, might flag that key. We'll handle all of that behind the scenes because, again, guess what? Uh-oh, light bulb. We built the system. We can do whatever the frick we want. Like, we can make it work in different groups. We have all the centers set up in groups for each region of the world. So if a publisher has servers in Europe, we can limit the license keys to just European centers that connect to those servers. We can handle all of that stuff. These things are humongous opportunities for us to really catapult the land center industry into the spotlight with all of us working together on one unified and shared platform. The thing that I will interject as well is I've just started doing some installs for centers who have adopted early. And, um, you know, I've, I've had practice at the eBash centers installing but n not working with other center owners. I did two installs today just on somebody doing one PC and they were up and running with games in their system in less than an hour. Right, and again, the result you get in the end is not the product that you're going to have with us when it's all finally installed and, and set up anyway. So, you know, again, it's apples and oranges. It's what I care about and what my goal in this whole thing is, is to make land centers stronger. I'm trying to make software that runs my land center better. That's what I'm trying to do. And I've watched centers fail 
because people that have been good people that have good ideas cannot get through the the headache of installing these advanced setups that these other companies require like it just doesn't make any sense so for us again no local servers you don't have to set up a server you don't have to have a certain operating system running on a local server screw it you don't have to do that we let amazon do that for us we're in the day of the cloud anyway you don't want your data locally you want your data online it's all backed up it's all available for you anytime you want to if you want to export it and import it into mailchimp go for it you know it's your data it's your customers it's all there you just don't have to worry about putting all that crap in there the the fun things that are coming, and again, these are not finalized, but I want to talk about them because this is where this stuff gets real. So we're talking with EA. We're talking about getting keys for Battlefield 1. It's not it's not inked. It's not 100% in stone yet, but all the indications look really great for us to get a humongous batch of license keys for Battlefield 1. Why is that important? Because every freaking one of us needs to have Battlefield 1 running on our PCs. Will it work with Origin? Absolutely. We'll make it all work. We'll make sure that it's all logged in correctly. We'll make sure that, again, we'll support the centers and give the support centers what they need to be able to run. That'll be included with our pro and our enterprise versions. You'll you'll get keys for free as part of those membership groups. So why is our stuff better? I mean, we're just going to be able to shower everybody with these free licenses where we don't have to all go out and spend our money to buy them. I don't know about you guys, but I dread the fall season when all these new games come out because I've got to go spend so much bloody money on all these stupid games. I have to do it. And you know what? They're not going to give us a discount, so we spend 60 bucks a game. So if we give your center the access to be able to get as many keys as you need for your players to play Battlefield 1 October 23rd, how much money is that going to save you? You know, on top of that, if Battlefield 1 integration launches with G-Day at the same time, and again, this stuff's not finalized, but just picture this in your mind. This is the utopia we've been waiting for. We want to make sure that when new games come out, our system not only supports those games, but it downloads those games, it updates those games for you, it does everything behind the scene where you can run your land center and you don't have to come in every week and try to figure out how to hack the next thing and get the next thing working in your land center. It's the example I use with a lot of people is you know, GameStop as a as an industry leader in sales, they don't have a lot of experts in marketing and planning at every one of their stores. What they do is they have a group of people at the corporate level that do that, and they multiply that by the 5,000 locations that they represent. So every Tuesday or Monday, they get a shipment, and the people at those stores can run the business. They don't have to figure out, oh, what what are we going to do next week for a cool new promotion? It just comes and it's delivered to them. That's what we want to do for land centers. We want to just put those tools out there and then have these events coming to all the land centers week after week after week. New games, new contests, new prizes, things that will make your center better. Why does Battlefield 1, why does EA want to work with us? Oh, guess what? Our software is going to be running on all those PCs and we're going to be able to tell them beyond a shadow of a doubt how many hours their game is played how many times their game was launched, what the system specs were on the PC that was running their games, we're going to be able to give them feedback like they've never gotten any time before. So they will keep working with us for future games and everything else that they can do for us because we have complete control and the ability to to hand those stats back to them. Now, that's that some centers may say, hold on a second, you know, that's my data. I don't want you messing with my data. You know what? I mean, we're not going to do anything with personal data. It's going to be aggregated data. We'll be upfront with everything that we deliver to publishers when we give them these reports. I'm not going to deliver them personal information from gamers. Like, that's not the stuff that we're trying to do. We're trying to give them statistics to prove that we can influence gameplay for their game if they provide us the support that we've always dreamed of having. Again, what could we have done a year ago before GG Leap? What could they have done for all of us? Oh, you know what? Ebash, here's 10 keys for your store. Here's 10 keys for your other store. Here's 10 keys for the others. You know, if you're a good center, could you mind sending me some of the reports? Yeah, I don't have time to do that. I don't have time to run them custom reports and email those back to them and create some presentation to show them what we did. But GG Circuit and GG Leap, we have time to do that. That's what our software will do. So we'll give these reports right back live to the publishers and give them real-time feedback on their games and support for their games. Now, here's the biggest news of the day, all right? So as this has not been the biggest news of the day or, uh, you know, so far. Oh, one thing I want to touch on real quick. The, the ease of installation of this is huge, and all of you out there need to start looking at other opportunities outside of your walls that are your land center. 
what eBash has done over the past three years, getting involved in the convention and the gaming uh, shows, trade shows, going out at mobile events, all of those things that we've done have greatly increased our footprint in the in the markets that we're in and brought more people to our brick and mortar stores so this is brilliant because you can go out and you can take a pc anywhere that you can get internet you can plop it down and it's instantly connected to the system and the game library is updated and it's ready to play so go make whatever partnerships you can make outside of your brick and mortar walls it may be the local pub down the street you just go put a couple gaming PCs in there and let the people go in there, log in, and be able to do. Oh wait, oh gosh, we don't. We need to put a server in there. We need. Oh no, you don't. You just need to take the freaking gaming PC down and plug it in and get an internet. That's all you need. You don't need an admin. You don't need a server. You just plug the gaming PC in wherever you want. You could put it in a museum. You could put it in a trade show. You could put it in a restaurant. You could put it in a laundry mat. You could put it in a laser tag arena. You could put it in a putt putt golf course. You could put it in a bowling alley. Go make deals. And utilize your contacts because no longer do you have to be bound by I'm on a local network with my server. It's no longer an issue. Take it wherever you want. Go make some money. That's what we're trying to do here. The more people that play, the more people that pay you guys to play, the more bodies that are in front of these games, the more support we'll get from the publisher. That's how it all boils down to. Okay. So fun story as we kind of wrap things up here a little bit. But fun story is that I met – I met the guys from Robert Morris University. Um, oh, I that think was two our years. First Gen Con. It was a. Uh, no, it was second. Sure. It was second year. It was second year, uh, and it was actually a PopCon. Kurt stopped by, and he said, "Hey, you guys, what is this? This is cool. We should talk sometime." And we've just stayed in contact for a few years. I finally got up to visit them last week, and I literally went up there because they have never used any software in their esports arena because they just have their scholarship athletes play it's not open to the students at robert morris just the scholarship athletes so their their students their their players come in and they just have desktop access they couldn't tell how many hours they played games they couldn't control what they played they just let them have desktop access they have coaches that try to watch over them but they didn't really have a way to control it so i went up there and i said listen Here's what we want to do. They loved it for a bunch of different reasons. But while we were there, we started talking about, oh, they're building a new facility. Oh, guess what? We've worked with the guys from eBlue. Do you want to talk to them? Oh, we've worked with Alienware. Oh, we've worked with these other companies. Now we're putting together a package for them that not only is the software, but it also is helping them build their second space. They're now up to this year, 80 athletes at their school will be on some sort of scholarship to play esports at the university. Those guys are, are setting the standard for esports in the universities. Now, while that may seem exciting and whatever that we're working with them, the craziest thing happened is that same week that I went and visited them, I had a guy that reached out to me on Skype and said, Hey, what do you guys use? Do you guys use Smart Launch at your land centers? Funny thing is, is that I was like, oh, well, we used to, but I don't anymore because we built our own solution. Oh, really? What is it? He immediately calls me and is like, we are scrambling. We've been trying to get Smart Launch to work in our university, and it doesn't meet the security requirements. It doesn't work with Windows 10. They're trying to roll out this new eSports 5.0, but it has all these bugs in it, and they don't call us back, and I don't even know where they're from. They're, you know, like There's all these issues with it. Can you help us? Can we use your product? So what we did is we immediately, we just called them up. And that same, I think it was like on the afternoon on a Friday, we called them up on Monday and we set them up on our system and they started testing the system on Monday. They will not use any other software that's out there because they're spe very, very specific and particular about their security settings inside their campus network. I think that the university market is going to explode. And again, land centers need to be involved. Don't sit around and wait. You're going to take these things that we're doing. You're going to go to your local universities, and you're going to say, this is what these universities are doing. You guys need to do this internally, and we'll help you make it happen. But these guys can't be happier than working with us because we're going overboard to make sure our product, which is brand new, built from the ground up, it's entirely all of our own code. We don't want anybody else's old code. We're not copying anything else anybody did because it's 15 years old and it's all written incorrectly and it all has a bunch of security falls, flaws in it. They broke Smart Launch down in about five minutes when they installed it at their university. They absolutely have no interest working with them. They are on board with us and I talked to them today and they gave us permission to talk about it. So it's, it's UCI, University of California, Irvine, who's launching in three weeks, is going to be running GG Leap and GG Circuit at their facility 
80 PCs plus consoles in a university with 31,000 plus students that's open for the students to play. They are setting the standard for all the universities to follow suit all over the U.S. and all over the world. And they are behind us 110 percent and we're behind them 110 percent we're going to do whatever we can we're actually going out there their launch week we'll physically be there with them to make sure that everything goes smoothly but the beauty of the whole thing is is that the only thing that they have running there is our client on the gaming pcs everything else is located at amazon's web servers they don't have to worry about security issues with MySQL databases, with Windows Server applications, with a whole other system that's running internally in their video game network that they have to worry about. All they have to do is get their PCs online and make sure the ports are open for gaming and the ports are open to talk to our Amazon Web Servers. That's all they have to do. Right. So here's the state that we're in right now. The, the, the centers that funded us January through June, they did their job. They got the base product out the door. We're in about a two or three month window before our stuff is fully open and, and out of beta where we feel comfortable with it being a full blown product to release it in those four different packages that will be available. So there'll be a light version that's free to use. It does not include any esports features of GG Circuit, but it does include hourly coins in the reward system if you want to do local rewards. The standard system is 25 bucks a month. I didn't want to price these by clients, but I ended up pricing these by clients because we, we do have an identified cost with running multiple clients back to the Amazon web servers based on how big you are. But again, this is not big jumps. I'm not charging you per PC. It's basically up to 20 clients can run the free version, up to 50 can run the $25 a month version, and then $100 a month that you get, you can run as many as you want. I don't care how many you want to run. Um, you know, at that point, you are our pro center. You're going to get license keys. You're going to be involved with all the other programs. GG Circuit's included with all this. So those of you that have been debating, like I pay this for GG Circuit, and I pay this, all that's gone. GG Circuit is now fully included in the standard pro and enterprise versions of the software. The enterprise version is probably the coolest one. You know. I've known this forever. And again, eBash is not gigantically awesome by any means. But again, we have two stores. There's things we need like multiple store support. I want to have my own branded skins. I want to have those things. That's what we'll give to the enterprise level customers. Some of those are people that sponsored us in the first uh, six months. Some of those people are coming on board now as new customers. So that's available for people. Right now, what we need is, I feel like this is like a telemarketing call, but right now what we need is we just need centers to start using it, playing with it, giving us feedback. And all we're asking for is an early access fee. Just join for 100 bucks a month. Every dime during early access will be credited towards your subscription, whatever you try to use later. So you're, you're basically um, just say prepaying for services you'll get to help us get through the last two to three months of development. You know, it's it's a very expensive venture. It's completely funded by us personally. You know, there are a few things that are being finished up over the next few weeks for the UCI installation uh, for their grand opening party that are be things that land centers care about, um, reporting, certain offers being able to be applied to accounts and those sort of things. Um, but right now you can run it. You know, if if you are ready to break the chain and say, listen, I'm going to get on board. I want to support these guys. You can break the chain and run with this software. We've been doing it for over a month. you know. And I would say two to three times a week, we release new versions. The clients are auto-patched. You don't have to do anything. They're updated on the fly. Now we're letting the world know. The website's live. All you got to do is fill out that contact form. I'll send you a PayPal subscribe button. If you can... Uh, support us at at least 100 bucks a month. You can do more if you want. Again, all of those fees apply to your future licenses. So we had a center, a small center, say, can I get involved? I uh, probably do the $25 a month one. I don't want to do $100 now. And I said, you know what? You can do 100 now, and all you're doing is you're prepaying for four months of the $25 a month access. And they're like, oh crap, that's awesome. You're like, that's we're not we're not doing this. We're doing this to pay for the product to be built. We're not doing this because we want your money because that's how we make money in our business. I run a land center. That's what JMac does. You know, like we work for our land centers. That's what we do for a living. You know, Chris writes software for other companies. That's what he does for a living. Mark runs iGames. He runs Alienware Arena. He runs NVIDIA programs. That's what he does for a living. We're building this software as a standalone system to try to grow our industry. This is the thing that we've been missing. And we don't care where you're at. We don't know how many care how many PCs you've got. We need you on board now, testing the stuff, putting it in place, 
giving us feedback, watching as we roll out, roll stuff out, taking advantage of it. And then when we go full open, you'll be able to choose which of those packages you want to roll into. And anything you pay in the early days will get you into those things. The other added bonus that I'm throwing out there is that anybody that's contributed over a thousand bucks, a lot of our centers have done that so far. They've done it in one-time donations. They've done it monthly. A lot of them paid us two or 300 bucks a month for six months during our our um, initial development p places. So they're going to get a 20% discount for life on anything we do. All of you guys out there and gals that are running centers have had a laundry list of things you wish you could have done. Online reservations, the ability to log in and check your time or add more time from home. Those things are things that we can create that we don't have to build an administrative client that then is downloaded and installed in your center that doesn't have web access, that doesn't integrate with some of these sites like PayPal or Stripe or Square or whoever you want to take payments from. Like the, the, the sky is the limit with our software. The GG Leap system, one of the things that we've had to do with GG Circuit is we built GG Circuit for three years and you've had to tie your GG Circuit account to somebody else's system. Like that's a pain in the ass. We've all fought it for two and a half years of being a GG Circuit Center with our other softwares that are out there. That all goes away because we're just creating one user that will be a GG Leap GG Circuit user. Now, if you want to save your old systems users, usernames, and maybe some of their balances, we're going to have definitely have the ability to import usernames into the new system so that everybody can come in with the usernames. We don't want any of the other systems passwords to come over. They're totally done incorrectly. They're not done to industry standards. We do not want to bring their passwords over with us into the new system. So all the users are going to have to create a new password. There's no other way around it because for security reasons, we've got to bring everybody up to this standard because it's the same login that they're going to use on the web. It's the same login they're going to tie everything in online as a player. So we don't want to use their old logins, their old passwords. But However, we want them to be able to claim their old identity, bring it over into GG Leap. So we will have an export import function for a lot of the major products out there to bring the username in. It's still in debate whether we worry about bringing in credit balances or time balances. Um, one of the reasons why is, is that, you know, some of the way the other companies do things are not done correctly. And some of those things are not the right amount of that old data we want to allow to be brought in because we don't want it to cause new problems. We definitely want to import usernames. We probably, if you're a good center and you've gotten this data, we probably want to import email addresses so that again, as a center, when you're importing everybody over and all of a sudden, oh crap, I've got a web-based system that my users can log into, you guys can generate a MailChimp mailing that says, or kick off a system in our mailing system that says, hey, we have a new online account at Game Republic. I need you to, you you know, this email is identified with this account. Click here to verify your email, create your brand new secure password, and link your in-game accounts right here through a web browser. Like, those are things that we're probably going to have these people do because, again, we're out with the old. We're done with that. I don't want any of that old the old way of doing things to creep into the new system just because we're worried about transferring over like some cash balance off some old customer's account. The client's built in Unity 3D, so you know we're not. It's not a Flash client. It works in Windows 10 grade. It has all the bells and whistles and things that we wish we've all had for years. Um, there will be portions of it eventually that the center will have control over at the standard level and higher to be able to change out banners and things on it. Um, so that, you know, again, we're planning on hopefully having some sponsors pay for the light version for the l little centers that cannot afford the bigger features. Um, so they won't have the ability to change some of those sponsored ads, whether it be from Alienware, NVIDIA, eBlue, or somebody. Like there is thousands of development hours built into this. Like the things that people don't understand, it's we have to be very careful with how data is handled back and forth with encryption and how the clients talk to the servers because it's all web-based. We have to be careful with how much data is actually passed to minimize the usage of people's internet connections. We have to think about what happens when the internet disconnects for Srini and those guys over in India where the internet's not as stable. And we've had to address all those issues. You know, we've got a lot of those things figured out but some of those things that we had to figure out have presented opportunities to do some really cool, badass shit down the road. So, you know, when you when you think about, oh, I've got to use, how do I maintain my game library and do updates and everything else? Oh, crap. You know what? 
we can do that now. We have a web-based system that can have the latest files ready to go so that when the first client connects, it gets the latest update files, and then it shares it on the local network with the other clients in your LAN center to save bandwidth. Uh, the sky is the limit with the system that we have, and everything that we've always wanted uh, you know, will be just a matter of prioritizing those things based on our supporting center's feedback. I talked to some centers today that, you know, that they can't believe where we're at because, again, we haven't been public with everybody what we're doing. And when I start talking about, you know, these things that we can do, it is it's it's just like a sigh of relief. Like as land center owners, we're like, finally, finally, we're going to be able to do the things that we've always needed to be able to do.